Welcome back to the program. Jeff Merrick along with you. Still to come, Scott Lachlan from Sirius XM NHL Network Radio. Dr. Ali Rendley as well. We'll get into the uh, the nuances of the Jack Eichel neck situation. In the meantime, uh, John Davidson joins us, uh, the president of hockey operations for the Columbus Blue Jackets. Uh, JD, how are you today? Thanks for doing this. Yeah, good. My pleasure. How are you, Jeff? Uh, I'm doing very well. You know, I've always maintained that if um, if social media were a thing, let's say in the 60s, the 70s, and the 80s, <laughs> the two people from the NHL that I would most love to see how they would how they would do on Twitter, on Instagram, whatever, are Gump Worsley and you, because <laughs> John, I mean, you get the showmanship. You like to have fun. You're funny. You're entertaining. And this thing just popped up. This old Miller Lite goalie ad popped up oh, on, on, oh, on a folks. random YouTube hole that I went down. I remember watching it years ago when it first came out. And, John, I had totally forgotten about it. And I hope this translates yeah. uh, to audio here. I want to play it. And then if you could tell the, the background story of yeah. you and Tony Esposito in this Miller Lite yeah. ad. Let's uh, Lance Kennedy back at uh, Master Control. Roll the, the Miller Lite ad with J.D. You know how to be tough to be a goalie. People are always taking shots at you. That's why goalies like us like to hang out with There's plenty of friendly people, you know. Hi, Eddie. John. Good to see you. Jilly, how you doing? Hey, John. Hey, John. And a goalie's favorite beer, Miller Lite. Hiya, Pierre. How's it going, John? In fact, no beer tastes better than a Miller Lite when you're surrounded by a lot of familiar faces. Yeah. yeah. Hey, guys. Who's that? Who's he? Tony. Tony Esposito. <laughs> Miller Lite. Everything you always wanted in a beer. And less. Oh my God, JD, I love it. Like honestly, I've I've watched that thing so many times in the past seven days. I mean, I, I remember watching it when it came out. Uh, what's and the idea of the goalie bar? First of all, is hilarious. Second of all, what's the behind the scenes on that one? How did that one? Before you talk about Columbus, how did that one come together? Is John still there? <laughs> did. We lose him on the goalie ad. Okay, we'll get to, we'll get JD back as we go down the uh, the old wormhole of old uh, great hockey commercials. I mean this this is a sport, by the way. We should probably do a program on this. And Lanny McDonald did a million of them that once upon a time did have a rich history, uh, like a really good, cool, funny history of hockey players doing ads and we're all familiar with the you know maurice rocket richard and the the grecian formula touch a grade the wife like it um you know lanny um with the swanson dinners with uh brian glenny uh was always outstanding as i mentioned lanny mcdonald did a ton of these things but for my money no one did it better than john davidson uh, who's back with us sorry john we just we just dropped the line there for a second um not a problem when you when you think back to that ad, like what's the behind the scenes on on that one? How did that one come together for you? Well, I, I think that being in New York City, and Miller Lite commercials were pretty big at the time. They decided to do something with hockey, and um, yeah. next thing you know, I got the call, and we ended up. It was a hot day. Oh man, was it hot in New York City? And we're in a little one of those storefronts that aren't very wide. The bar, the restaurant, but deep. Yep. And I think the person that was directing it was. Uh, he had done a lot of Michael Jackson um, videos. Mm-hmm. So he was a pretty much a quality guy. I had problems re- remembering our lines, but we did we did uh, take after take after take. <laughs> the classic was, and Tony, Tony, you know, God bless Tony, he's gone now. Yes. He had one line, and he couldn't say it. And uh, then we broke for lunch, and he had about six Miller Lights. <laughs> and he nailed his line after lunch. <laughs> and I mean, nailed it pure. <laughs> hang on, hang on. His, we... only li- his only line was, hey, guys. <laughs> <laughs> well, you had to walk in and the arms had to be up. And the, for the people listening on the radio, everybody that I said hello to were sitting in the bar wearing their masks. Yeah. So you recognize each individual because the masks back in those days were quite uh, individualized. Tony yeah. walked in with it on top of his head, not over his face. Yep. So nobody recognized him, and then he slides the mask over his face, and he, oh, Tony, Tony Esposito. And then we had to do um, a whole new segment because the beer bottles in the States were different than the beer bottles in Canada. Mm. So you had to do one rendition for the U.S., one for Canada. It ended up being a long day, but it was a blast, and it uh, was hot in there. My Lord, it was hot. Uh, listen, it was fun. It's, it really was. Uh, well, 
when, when's the last time you saw that at? Because it's just recently oh, made the know. rounds on social media now. <laughs> oh, no. has, has no one from your office time. alerted to... you to this? Has no one from the office <laughs> told you this? No, I don't think so, no. I'll have to go look it up. Oh, we had it's, fun, though. We had a lot. Tony was a, a wonderful guy to be around. Wonderful yeah. guy. Yeah, you know, before we go on to talk about your Blue Jackets, and you mentioned we just you know, most recently lost Tony Esposito. Do you have a couple of thoughts on the former Chicago goalie? Oh, he was great. I ended up with him and um, um, Jimmy Rutherford. Three of us went over with Team Canada one year, 1977 to Europe. And I got the axe, and those two guys were the goalies for the tournament. But we traveled around and in uh, Austria and different places and got to know about Tony. He said, put the red on him. He liked his, the red hot from top of his oh, his neck all the way down. And when you walked by him before a game, I'm telling you, all you smelled was that bomb, that red bomb stuff. <laughs> and he, he was quite something. Quite something. Um, just He was an innovative guy, fun guy. Um, he and Phil, Phil's a very good friend. And um, just Tony and his wife. And it just, I'm just going to miss him. It's there's been a lot of guys, you know, the older you get, the, the more you're around, the more you lose people. And uh, Bob Plager, Rod Gilbert, there's a whole bunch. And it's just all good people, all great players. Jimmy mm-hmm. Nielsen, of course. It, it's, uh, it's tough. It's tough. But good people, good memories, great memories. Amen. Um, JD, to your Blue Jackets, and I'll just ask you point blank. I mean, every year at training camp, there's a couple of, you know, players that just flat out surprise everyone and give us cause for pause. You know, Washington, hey, is Hendrix Lapierre going to make this? When it comes to your squad, man, every conversation that I have with anybody about CBJ is, is Cole Sillinger going to make this team? Yeah, there's a chance. Uh, also, add Chinikov into that yeah, mix. Both of them yeah. have been very good, and it started in Traverse City when we went there for the for the rookie tournament, these two were outstanding. I think Chinakov had four goals in six games. He can shoot it. He can shoot the puck, whether it's a one-timer or just a snapshot, um, on par with anybody in the game. Hmm. It's scary, that shot. It, it just made, I was sitting there, the St. Louis guys were near us, and uh, Al McKinnis was there, and he scored on a just a lethal wrist shot, and it, Al just, ooh, that, it's caught everybody by surprise. And with Sillinger, he's... Uh, you you wonder about young people that just been drafted. Are they strong enough? He's got he's got a man's body. He's in pretty good uh, pretty good shape that way, and he knows how to play the game. They both love the game, and we've got some important decisions uh, ahead of us. Whether or not these two guys are we better with them in the lineup, or are we better with them um, baking and cooking somewhere else until it's time for them to step in? Are they ready? Chinikov's already played in the KHL for a year, so he knows the, the yeah. man's game, and he's he's strong. But uh, both of them have been very enlightening. Yeah, Bob Hartley um, told me plenty about Chinikov before he uh, before he came over. So that you know, in, in some yeah. ways, isn't a surprise. Cool. So, like, I always wonder, John, like, how do those conversations go? Like, I understand the nature of scouting, and you sort of project not what the kids like at eighteen, and base your opinion on that. But what's he going to be like at twenty five? Like, what yeah. goes into the decision of where the best place for a kid is? Like, we've seen teams yeah. rush players. We've seen them, you know, send them back. What goes into that decision? Well, it's, it's the, it's, you get to know the kid, first of all, and you think of Sillinger, his dad played. Yeah. So the hockey pedigree is there. His dad also played in Columbus, knows the city. Mm-hmm. And um, this, I, 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 the story I heard early in camp was he grabbed uh, – I forget who it was. No, it was either Rick Nash or Derek Dorsett or one of the guys. And he said, can I talk to you? He said, yeah, sure. What do I have to do to make this team was the question. And so there's a kid that isn't going in wide-eyed and starry-eyed and not quite sure. what He, he came in with a purpose. And, um, you know, he can play center. He can play the wing. The knock on Cole Sillinger was his skating was not quite there. It's got to improve by a stride. Well, I don't know what he did in the summer, but he doesn't have, well, he can always improve, but he doesn't have to improve to play at the NHL level. And mm-hmm. he's been going hard just about every day since the Traverse City tournament. That's quite a number of weeks ago. And he's hanging in, and he's playing hard, and he's playing well, and he's respected by his teammates. Um, for a while, last night they, the team had Boone Jenner in Buffalo in, in, at center ice with Lion A and uh, Jake Voracek. 
Um, and that was good because Boone's picked up a step too, which is quite quite interesting. But um, Sillinger's been there for quite a few of the practices, and and uh, the two veteran guys love playing with him. Love playing with him. Mm-hmm. So it's it's interesting. We'll go through discussions. We'll watch the rest of camp. We've got three more games to go. Then you make decisions. Now is he is he better off going back to junior? Is he better off going to the American League? And he can go there because. He wasn't drafted out of junior. He was drafted out of the USHL. Um, Or is he better to stay here and play up to the 10 games? And it depends on ice time. It depends on whether he's going to fade or if he keeps his stamina and his mental capacity where it needs to be and how how he takes the grind of the NHL. This this tough, tough business. So I I think he's passed passed every test to this point. But... um, it's still a lot of thinking and a lot of discussions that are going to go on. Um, from Cole Sillinger, I want to ask you about Gustav Nyquist, uh, someone we haven't yeah. seen in quite some time, and he's healthy and he's back. And I always wonder about expectation when you've been gone for, you know, over 400 days uh, like Nyquist has. Yeah. What's the expectation here, JD? He's been really good. Um, he's he's he's. I I didn't know Gus very well until I got back here to Columbus, and I really enjoyed chatting with him a little bit. Uh, he carries himself well. He's um, he almost told me a million times about how smart he is on the ice, and I'm watching the the camp on the ice, and then watching the games. He's exactly right. So, I, I my expectations are that he's a he's a very very intelligent, smart hockey player who knows how to play the game because he's been around, and that's the professionalism we're going to see. So that's what I'm looking forward mm-hmm. to. Um. I don't want to talk about Zach Ronaldo and COVID, but I want to talk about mm-hmm. that position because obviously by bringing in someone like Zach Ronaldo to begin with, it's clearly an identification that that element of the team was necessary. Do you think it's incumbent uh, upon Columbus to go out and find someone else like Zach Ronaldo, given that he's not going to be part of the mix? Yeah. Well, Zach, was, uh, he signed a two-way contract, so most mm-hmm. likely was going to start with Cleveland, however, in not getting vaccinated, we've made a made it uh, very clear that nobody's going to be here that's not vaccinated. We just don't want to take any of those chances, and and uh, that's just the way it is from our point of view. But uh, mm-hmm. I, I think our team in watching, I, I think we're not going to be intimidated by any means. If we have young people come into the lineup, that would be Sillinger and uh, Chinikov if they make the club. And both of them have man's bodies. They're not going to be intimidated by people running around. I think that Washington with Wilson, he's a tough kid, and he plays hard. And uh, then the Islanders also play hard. They have some tough guys, too. But I, I just I don't think we needed to overreact. I know in Columbus, uh, pardon me, in Cleveland, where the majority of the young guys will end up being, you've got uh, you've got uh, Brett Gallant there. He is one oh, tough yeah. dude. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and yeah, then yeah. if Ronaldo was there, that would be something we wouldn't have to worry about at all. But we'll, we'll, we'll keep eye on things and watch and see how it goes. But I don't expect too much of the uh, of us being intimidated at all. Um, we, uh, Elliot and I, when we were in Chicago for the NHL NHLPA uh, Players Tour, uh, sat down and had a, a nice talk with Zach Wierenski. And yeah. one of the things that he was adamant about is, I don't want to hear the word rebuild. Don't say yeah. that word. We're not saying that word. What does JD think about that? Well, I understand that. And that's the way I'm glad he's thinking. Um, however, we do not, do understand that we're going to have a lot of young people come into this lineup. Could be two of them this year. And there could be more with each year coming up, knowing the amount of players like the Marchenkos and the Volkros, these young people that belong to the Blue Jackets. And in saying that, we're, we're going to infuse that so we become a better team. But I, I really do enjoy the way this team is thinking, the way they're playing. I think if you break our team down, the one thing that's going to be special for it, we're going to have two very, very good power play units, really good power play units. Mm-hmm. And Zach is a big part of that, of course. So, so that's that's one thing. I think uh, we're going to have to have improvements. You know, we, this team has been thinned down center ice, but Boone Jenner looks real good. He's picked up a step. Sillinger, if he makes it, Roslovic, 
I've been impressed with him, too, by the way, in camp. Mm -hmm. Very skilled and talented kid. Really is. So I I don't think we're in a rebuild. Uh, They've used terminology around here uh, with reset, which is fine because it was not a good year last year. But uh, I I think we're going to surprise some people. Uh, this is a tough division. Like you, you mentioned, like yeah. not just physically tough, but like there's good teams. Like I, I, I look yeah. at, you know, Carolina and the Islanders, and I know that, you know, there's some injuries to deal with and, and a couple of COVID situations in Pittsburgh, but that's still a loaded team. And Washington, you know, continues to, to chug along at a high level. I think Philadelphia is yeah. a wild card. The Rangers should be improved. The Devils are improved. Like everywhere around you, John, like – Everyone's yeah. like it's it's well, a stacked. It's just be blunt. It's a stacked division. Yeah, it is. It is. And, and with that being said, that's why you got to work to get better and get better quickly. Listen, when I go back to the days when the Edmonton Oilers won the Stanley Cups, and Calgary was three hours down the road, right? Mm-hmm. Well, they went in there with Chuck Fletcher and Bob Johnson to build a team that beat Edmonton. Yeah. So you you've got to deal with this, and and I also think that the majority of your game is being within your own division. Your young people are going to battle really good players. And that's going to make them be better sooner as you try to build and right. reset. So you have to – it is what it is. So you've got to deal with it. And it, There's no question. You're right, John. It's not going to be easy. It's just, this is going to be a battle. It is, simply put, going to be a tough one. Metro's fun hockey. Um it sounds as if, I mean, at least, you know, the, the whispers and now people are starting to talk more about it publicly. Like, we may see Max Domi earlier than we thought. Yeah. Is that, is yeah. that accurate? That's accurate. That's accurate. He's done real well. He's really worked. I really enjoyed chatting with him. It's only been a couple of times, but I've enjoyed uh, his, um, his upbeat attitude he's got right now. His uh, shoulder is strong. He's got, and the doctors and the training staff and Max are all getting excited. We as a team want to be very careful. Being an ex-player, I know how important it is for players to be healthy before they come back and play. So Max, I don't want him to get ahead of himself like I used to when I was a player. Hmm. And uh, so I want him to be ready. But uh, it really is its quite surprising where he sits right now with the and it's surprising that it's it's getting there this quickly, but it's not surprising knowing the amount of work he's put into it. Certainly. Uh, listen, this has been a lot of fun. Uh, always generous with your time. Thanks for sharing the, okay. uh, the Miller Lite stories and uh, some yeah. uh, some insight onto your Blue Jackets. Thanks so much for doing this, yeah. J.D. Pleasure. Take care of yourself, Jeff. All the best. Thank you. There he is. Thanks, J.D. John Davidson, the uh, president of hockey operations for the uh, Columbus Blue Jackets here. Uh, joining us on the Merrick Show, uh, our producer, Matt Marchese, uh, standing by. Matty, are you there? I'm here. Anything uh, Anything you like in that interview from J.D.? Well, first, firstly, that the talk about the commercial the was commercial outstanding. Was awesome. yeah. yeah, and you and I spoke about this pre-show, about how that commercial reminded us of uh, Bob and Doug McKenzie's Strange Brew, which is, is excellent. And you did teach me something about that, actually, as well. The Strange Brew is based on Hamlet. Brother kills brother to take over. Well, the, 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 the tip-off is that it's called Elsinore Brewery. And if you know anything about Shakespeare, you know about Elsinore Castle, but nonetheless. Yes. Yeah, Strange uh, Brew is based on Hamlet. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Yeah, in a my long English degree work way. somehow. Exactly. Yeah. But you know what stood out to me is, like, John Davidson made me believe that the Columbus Blue Jackets were going to be a competitive team. And I know I know, John has... Um, um, he's been in the media before, but he he spoke very highly of a lot of guys, and and he made me believe that this team, you know, has a really bright future. And and I know um, he was brought in for other reasons, but if I'm a Columbus Blue Jackets fan, and I and I hear John Davidson talk like that, I know he's not supposed to say anything different, but he made me believe that this team will be at least competitive. I don't know how good they're going to be, but they're yeah. certainly going to work every single night. Yeah, you see, like when I mentioned the Zach Wierenski thing to him, and he said, well, I'm glad he's thinking that way. And as a player, you want your players not to think about rebuild. You want to think about being competitive in every game. But he was quick to point out, like, listen, you know, we've got, you know, a lot of, you know, Yegor Chinnikov and, you know, maybe Cole Sillinger mentioned Karel Marchenko. Like, there's a, still a lot. Like, you look all around, like, you know, Alexandre Texier is only 22 years old. Chinnikov is, you know, 20. Sillinger is 18. Uh, I still really like that Emil Benstrom kid. Like he's got like one of the hardest one timers in the game. 
Uh, he's only 22 years old. Liam Foodie, um, speedster. He's, you know, 21 years. Like, there's a lot of Adam Boakfast, part of the Seth Jones deal. Like, these are all really, really young hockey players. Like, it's still going to be, I know he doesn't want to say rebuild, maybe. But, Maddie, it's a rebuild. It, it is. Rebuild. Nobody likes that word. Everybody likes the, re- the reset on the fly. That's what people like, Jeff. Not a no, rebuild. You know, you know, my favorite one is, oh, no, it's not a rebuild. We're reloading. A retooling. Retooling. <laughs> don't want to say uh, reload. Don't want to say rebuild. Somebody okay. explain to me the difference. I don't know. You have to get a bigger brain than me. Uh, You're the English two- major. Well, that's because I can just point out the similarity and storyline arc between Hamlet and Strange Brew. It doesn't mean I can <laughs> describe what the difference between a rebuild and a reload is in the NHL. Um, all right, we got some big brains coming up in hour two. We will talk to Scott Lachlan from NHL Network Radio in a couple of moments to around the NHL of some of the some of the teams that might surprise or some of the teams that we really don't know who they are. And also Dr. Ali Randley. Um, in a, as I'd like to describe it, nuanced conversation about what's really happening with the Jack Eichel next situation. Back in a moment.